Hi, Cat's Cradle here. I didn't really intend to go to war today, but sometimes when you're growing your own food, things don't always go as planned and you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm busy today trying to pack up Prepper A to go off to girls camp for a week. Say a little prayer for me. This is the first time I've ever let her go and I'm a little nervous about it. But anyway, she went out this morning to pick raspberries and she came back and her eyes were kind of big. She said, the Japanese beetles are back. She said, and there's a bunch of them. I asked her if she thought she could pick them off like we did last year and drop them into soapy water and, and get rid of them that way. And she said, no, there's way too many. Whenever I brush up against a plant, she said, they just fly up out of there. She said, there's no way I can pick them off by hand. We're going to have to get the Japanese beetle traps out. If you followed my channel for very long, you know that we've been plagued for a couple of years with Japanese beetles. I've made plenty of videos to show you about it, and I'll post the links below this video if you want to go back and watch my Japanese beetle history. It's quite uh, well documented. Last year, at the end of the growing season, I did two things. Or Actually, this was before the end of the growing season, because I think I did this in July. I put down what's called milky spore powder, which is a little powder that I dust onto the ground. And how it's supposed to work is that when the Japanese beetles get ready to burrow into the ground to lay their eggs, they pass through this milky spore powder. And when the larvae are born, they actually rub up against this powder and it keeps them, it actually kills them. In fact, we've seen lots of grubs that, that are poisoned because they change color once they've come in contact with the milky spore powder. So I know that it was working for those those larvae that were born in my yard. However, the problem is all the other Japanese beetles in the neighborhood that did not, you know, did not come in contact with it, which I'm sure there are just millions of them. The other thing I did was I bought three Japanese beetle traps at my local farm and home center. I don't technically uh, use things like that, uh, commercially prepared things like that. However, uh, this is not a pesticide or insecticide. It is a lure. It's a pheromone lure that's in uh, in these little traps. And so I thought I would see if I could package them in mylar with oxygen absorbers and if I could use them this year if they would still work, if the pheromone would be good a year later. When I opened up the mylar bags, sure enough, uh, I could smell the pheromone myself, and it's not an unpleasant thing. It actually smells very fruity. So uh, I went back to survey the damage to see if we really needed to open up, I mean, if we really need to use those traps. And uh, sure enough, we, we do need to use them. I've tried to document for you what I saw when I went around the corner to survey the damage. And, of course, they were on the raspberry plants as usual. Here's my new little peach tree that we planted last fall and you can see there's some damage there and there's even a Japanese beetle under that leaf. They weren't on the peach tree nearly as much as they were on the plum tree. They've really done a number on the plums. Here's uh, just one leaf that they ate through and now it's turning brown and looking terrible. Here's another one where you can see it just begins to look lacy where they where they cover it and just eat it to pieces. Here's more of the plum tree. This is a limb that looks really sad. They've just eaten every leaf on this limb. And while at this point it's not going to kill the tree, uh, if I would, if the trees would have produced fruit this year, it's unlikely that the that they would have grown as big as they should have because the leaves are what takes in the energy that helps to grow the fruit. So I'd have been in real trouble. Luckily, they weren't producing this year, but I still don't want the foliage decimated, so I've got to get rid of them. Here's the raspberries, and you can see that's their favorite because the fruit's on there, and they're eating it like crazy. The leaves are already lacy, and they've done a good bit of damage to the fruit that's ripening right now. I've got a couple more pictures where you can just see that they're just all clustered up in these big old balls. Preparate's right. There's no way she could hand pick them all especially in the heat of the day like it is right now, they, um, they, they fly away very readily when you touch them. Early morning, late afternoon, they're a little sluggish and slow and they're a lot easier to catch, but right now in the heat of the day, uh, it's almost impossible. Now this next picture is not very good, but I hope that you can just see how many 
beetles are on that one raspberry. I mean, there's like maybe 20. Unbelievable. So yeah, we've got a real problem. So what we did is we went ahead and finished picking all of the raspberries off, all the ripe raspberries that had not been, uh, that are not buggy. Of course, the buggy eating ones we threw away, but we picked all the ripe ones. Here's Preparay strategically on top of a, a, a ham radio antenna her dad's going to install here at the house, but she's reaching back to get uh, to the raspberries. We planted them all under the windows on the long side of our house. She had to sample them here. It's just beautiful. Always the first batch we eat with a little bit of cream and sugar. Well, we call it cream. It, it's um, We like it actually with canned milk and a little bit of sugar. So that's what we'll have this evening for our dessert. And here's, here's what we did. We put together three of the beetle traps. I was hoping just to use one of them, but there's just no way. We've got to put them at three different places on the property. This actually is at the neighbor's house. He no longer lives there. It's It looks like an old abandoned uh, rundown house, and so uh, he, didn't, he wouldn't care a bit that that's hanging up there, and there was a hook on a pole. So we put one there. That's actually right by where our Concord grape arbor is, and boy, the minute we hung it, the the Japanese beetles started humming around. You can see a couple on the trap right there. And then the next place we hung one was at the back of our property, the very back. This is behind my husband's shed. The thing, the only thing growing back here are some uh, Jerusalem artichokes and the raspberries. I didn't see any on the Jerusalem artichokes, but the raspberries are covered. And you can see now we've only had this hanging just one minute and you can see the Japanese beetles coming into it. Here's another one at the neighbor's property. It's uh, a little bit away from where our grape arbor is and you can see this isn't really a close-up shot but you don't need it. You can see that they're all over that trap and they're falling down in that bag. Here's a little bit closer shot. I think I think we're good that this is going to work that it's going to get them because even us just carrying them through the yard they were swarming over our head trying to get to that pheromone. Look at that. I can't wait to see how many we actually catch in one day. I will try to go out this evening and document for you how many we caught. Now these traps the great thing about them is they have a zipper at the bottom so I'm going to be able to open up that zipper and dump all those Japanese beetles into some kind of disposal bag and tie them up and throw them in the trash and then zip that bottom of the bag back up and let them keep catching Japanese beetles. It says that the traps are good for the entire season. I don't doubt it because the pheromone smell is is very strong and it's obviously working. Fifteen dollars is a small price to pay to save uh, the amount of raspberries I'm going to save. Uh, even the bowl that we picked this morning is probably you know, fifteen or twenty dollars worth of raspberries if you had to buy them at a traditional grocery store. And this is just the very uh, beginning of the harvest because my June or July harvest, what it's a little late this year. Uh, this the harvest right now is a lot less, probably a third of what I'm going to get when these produce the second time of the season, which is October. These are ever bearing raspberries, so we get a harvest in June or July, and then another one in October. So it's it's paramount that I save as much of the leaf structure as I can so that it will go into uh, energy and growing the plant so that these will set new blossoms in October and I'll, and I'll get berries again. Uh, I think the investment is well worth it. I will be going to the farm and home store this week and probably be picking up six more traps. I'll put three of them in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber and seal it up with uh, this year's date on it. I'll do another three in another bag and I'm thinking the pheromone is probably so strong that I can buy two years worth of traps just so that I have them if I need them. I hope these beetles are enjoying their last meal because uh, I intend to get rid of them. I hope this helps you if you're having the same kind of problem and until next time this is Cat's Cradle.